We're gonna make a flint and steel fire today. Got my flint, steel, striker. Got a little bit of char. Now what am I gonna do? The whole day's ruined. You thought I was gonna like let it slide. We're not gonna let it slide. What do you do when you run out of char material? Now, I, as much as anybody else out there, I love a good piece of char cloth. Like it's like the Cadillac of char material in my mind, especially when you get the good terry cloth, like you steal your wife's good towels and you cut them up, especially ones from like Pottery Barn. They're so tightly woven and they're great. But the point is that um, sometimes you don't have that with you, okay? or maybe you're working on your fire development skill. So you wanna just get better and better and better at making fires outside. And you're getting away from matches and lighters and ferrocerium rods, and you're really evolved into the flint and steel world and you're into it. Well, the next progression is to get away from that charred cloth, okay, because it's so nice and, and generous to us, and start to find things around us that we can utilize to make char. Now, there's a lot of different things, but I'm gonna show you my favorite today, and that is what we call punk wood, or sponge wood. All right, so you can't even make this stuff up. Right behind where we were just talking. All right, I turned around, I was like, there it is. The perfect camera location, the reason why, is we have a hard piece of wood here. Yeah, yeah, Dan, we know there's wood all over the woods. What, what, get to the point. Point is, this isn't what we're looking for, okay? What we're looking for is rotted wood. Now, there's gonna be different levels of rot, okay? There's gonna be rot that it just falls apart and is pure mush. But let's start with the most obvious. Most people are gonna go up to a piece of wood. It literally sounds like a piece of lumber and they're gonna try to break pieces off. No good, you don't know what you're doing. That's why we're watching a video. So if it's real hard, feels like a real piece of wood, nah, totally just forget about it. Now, if you take one little knee step over right here, wow, this thing literally feels like a kitchen sponge. I'm not making this stuff up, like a kitchen sponge. Okay, so right here, if you could see as I press, literally sponge-like material. Now, I know what you're probably thinking though right away. It looks damp, okay? And it is a little bit damp, and that is okay. That's one thing that you need to realize is that we're going to cook the water out of this. So if you could find something like this, go for it, okay? It's gonna work fine. But usually look around the area because you can normally find something else that's just as good that's dry. Hence, right next to that piece right there, we have another nice piece of punk wood. Now you can see, this is literally just coming apart, okay? Again, we still have that very spongy type texture to this. That is what we're looking for. I press this in, it bounces back. Press it in, bounces back. Press it in, you get the point. Now a few key elements to remember. Number one, don't be scared of moisture. Just make sure that it's not so wet that it's actual mush. If you take it in your fingers and like move it around a little bit and it just turns into absolute like mud, no good, it's just way too far gone rotted. But if you find a piece of wood like this and you can squeeze it, okay, even if it's a little bit damp and it bounces back, that's what you're looking for. That's sponge wood or punk wood. That's exactly what we're gonna make char with. So it's really, really easy. It's gonna be the same as making that really nice char cloth. You're gonna take your tin, you're gonna just break a couple chunks of this off. Don't smash it down. You want some bigger pieces in there. So if you have a bigger char tin and I have, I only have this, this little thing right here. I mean, just do what you can to get it in there. So I'm gonna just fill this inside, okay? I can jam pack it or I can just go with the way it is. And I think I'm just gonna go with it how it is, like this, okay? Fill it up just a little bit. Put that little lid on there. And we're gonna get this right into the campfire. Now I know what you're probably thinking. How do you have a campfire if you had no char cloth and you had to do that? You should always carry a backup fire starter. Um, we're doing this for fun. We're learning fire development, okay? Always make sure you have char. So at the end of the camp, or once you make your first fire, check your char source, make sure you have enough in your tin, and then go on with your day. Don't ever run out of it like I did at the beginning of the video. Movie magic, though. Now, a couple commonly asked questions about char, natural char, because it's all pretty much the same at the end of the day. And that is, number one, 
how do you cook it? Well, you put it in a tin container and throw the tin container in the campfire. When you do that, you're removing one element of the triangle of fire, and that is oxygen. So you have the heat, you have the fuel, you have no oxygen. So what's going to happen is you're gonna create, in a sense, carbon. That carbon is gonna take a low temperature spark, and there you have your char cloth, charred material, whatever it may be. Now that question really quickly gets followed up by, well, what if I see smoke or flame coming out of the char tin itself? So you do need somewhere for the gases to escape out of the char tin. That's why you see some individuals put a small hole into the container. I have a small hole in my container because it's a screw top tin, and it is quite watertight. Now it's not totally watertight. There's no plastic or any kind of rubber or anything keeping that thing totally watertight, but it's a tight um, close. So I put a little hole on top. But if you're using something like an Altoids tin, where those hinges are on the back is more than enough for that gas to escape. So don't get concerned if you see flame. Now, if you do see flame and a lot of smoke coming out and the tin actually popped open because you overfilled it because you panicked that you're not gonna have enough char, if that thing opened up, you probably ruined your char. You're gonna have to start the process over again. But lucky for you, we're showing you now how to find natural elements. You've gotta keep cutting up your underwear. Because when you keep cutting up your underwear, after a while you have a thong and then you have nothing. Just pants. All right, perfect. You see that smoke coming out of that little hole? That is the gases escaping, okay? Everything is fine with my char. I don't have to be concerned. Just some gases escaping, don't worry about it. Now, that also gets followed up with the question, can I overcook my char? And you cannot. You cannot overcook your char. I mean, if you put it in maybe like an inferno and melt the tin, bad idea. But if you put it in the tin, even if the tin's red hot and you cook it for an hour and bring it out, the char is only gonna get so charred. Now you can undercook it, and that means if I threw it in the fire, I only left it cook for a couple minutes and pulled it out, maybe nothing looks different with the material, and also maybe um, only part of it is starting to look black throw it back in, it's not gonna hurt anything. The other thing is that if you have this char for a long time and you think moisture got to it, the next campfire you start up, throw it back in, dry it back out, and it's as good as gold. And that sort of fulfilled the question I get asked then, can char go bad? It normally doesn't go bad, it just picks up moisture. So throw it back in a campfire and you should be fine. Oh, oh. And how long should you cook it? I don't know, throw it in for five, 10 minutes, pull it out, let it cool down. If you open it back up, remember, triangle of fire, heat, oxygen, and fuel. If we add oxygen back into it, we get flame or at least a burning chunk of char. So we wanna make sure that tin is cool enough. I, for, I forgot the word tin. We wanna make sure that tin is cool enough in order to handle it. If we can handle it and open it up and look at it, that's fine. It's cool enough to uh, not add oxygen back into the triangle. Okay, so char material, you can see I can handle the tin, right? That means it's cool enough. Simply open it up, what do we got? So you can see that the material has shrunk a lot, but that's normal, okay? To test this without even having to throw a spark in it, I like to take it and see if it crumbles away really easily. If it feels weird and it feels like it's not doing this, okay, then something might be wrong with it. But for our purposes, this looks really good, feels really good, I think we're gonna be good. Okay, now, um, my char is good. We get out our flint and steel kit. When it comes to natural char, specifically punk wood, okay, it is very, very delicate. So holding it next to our stone usually ends up in catastrophe. It breaks down, it crushes, it flakes away, it doesn't work too well. So what we need to do is change up our technique. And I've talked about this in numerous other videos, and that is that we're gonna hold our striker above our char tin, we're gonna take our stone, and we're going to strike our stone down. That's gonna throw sparks downward into our char tin. At that point when the char, natural char, is ignited, we're gonna pick a piece of it out, place it in our bird's nest, and blow that to flame. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna take my striker, I'm gonna put it above my tin, and I'm going to strike down in. And right away, you can see down in there, we have burning char. So definitely give this one a shot. Now, what I want you to take away with this though, is remember, I'm not saying that this is the survival end all. It's a good option, it's something to know, it's definitely something to add in your fire arsenal. 
But what this is going to do now is really expand your horizons around fire development. So when you go out with your flint and steel, now you can get away from that char cloth, you can start to pick other materials. Punk wood, you can play around with different bird's nests, you can even try charring other things. And there are a ton of other things, maybe we'll do some videos in the future on different things that you can char in order to take a low temperature spark like from a flint and steel. But it gives you that option. You're starting to think about, okay, what do I need to do? How do I need to change? What adjustments do I need to make? It's a little damp, it's cold, it's raining. How do I make this work and that's gonna make you a better fire person. Just a fire person? Fire maker? Bushcrafter. Okay, it's gonna make you better overall when it comes to fire creation. So definitely have fun with this one. Go out and if you're good at flint and steel now, then add this in and start playing around with it and you will definitely have a good time. So this was Dan Wolak of Coal Cracker Bushcraft. As always, check us out at coalcrackerbushcraft.com. And until the next video, stay in the woods with your flint and steel. <laughs>